Okay, what am I going to talk about today? Uh, hello, everybody. This is Dr. Novak. First time to my channel. Thank you for watching or stopping by. Anyhow, I get a few emails a month, and they talk about one thing. They start a new tank. It could be any kind of tank, goldfish tank, whatever. And uh, they have an algae problem brown algae, string algae, first thing that happens. This is just common with new tanks. You, uh, the different kind of algae that make when a play, plaguing the tank are, um, they're as unique to the tank as everybody. Some people just may have brown silica algae growing. Others may have a brown hair-like string algae growing. Uh, each tank is plagued different when it's brand new on what kind of algae is going to dominate the tank. The next thing that happens, I get an email, oh, my tank, it's, it's got algae in it. It's brand new. I put some plants in it. The plants are covered in algae. It has algae. Um, and then the next paragraph is, oh, I treated it with some hydrogen peroxide and my plants don't look too good. Some of them melted away trying to get rid of the algae. Well, the problem is with a lot of new tanks, you're going to get different kinds of algae. Some may be brown, some may be a bright green, some may be stringy, it's brand new. But there is a, a way of controlling algae in brand new tanks. Normally, brand new tanks have to break in and they it takes time to break in a tank. Now you can add stuff to your tank, uh, like Fritz Sign 7, that will help, but it doesn't guarantee that you may not be attacked with an algae problem. So what do you do? Well, one choice is try to use some hydrogen peroxide by spraying everything down and trying to get rid of the algae that way. But that is not maybe going to be long term because a lot of times you may spray down an aquarium and the algae will just come back after a week or two and you'll be back to spraying it or something like that. There's chemicals you can use. A lot of them are sold for ponds and things like that. But once again, you have to read the labels, whether or not they may be bad for plants. However, some people have hardscape. They may have plastic plants and they set up an aquarium. They have the same problem as the person that had plants. To try to avoid some of these problems is try to have a plant that's aggressive, will grow fast. But that doesn't guarantee much, not with new tanks. This is very common. Once a tank seems to go through that break-in period, and it could take as long as six months to actually go through a break-in period. Everybody goes through it until it settles down and you have less and less problems. So one thing I recommend to people is, what do you have in your tank? Well, I put a couple of plants in. Are the plants doing good? Well, no, they're not doing good at all. Uh, I did a mistake. I put too much hydrogen peroxide. They're melting away, whatever. Okay. Are the plants expendable? Did you have a lot of money involved in it? Uh, you know, you have to know if they have a ton of plants. But what, what good's a ton of plants in an aquarium, right? If you're just full of algae and it looks like a mess. Uh, that's bad, too, because some people are just in a big rush. And uh, so I say, well, do you want to try to take care of this algae problem. You want to have fish, but you want to try to take care of it naturally. And yeah, I'd rather do that than use chemicals. And I'm not having good luck with the hydrogen peroxide. I said, well, there are ways of doing it, but there is one particular animal that is ferocious with algae and plants. I mean, it is, it's unbelievable how much this animal can eat of algae and plants. 
I said, that's the bad downside of this animal is it will eat plants. Unlike, uh, let's say if you have goldfish and you have a bunch of algae problems and you have goldfish, you don't want to get like Pocosmus. Pocosmus, um, no. They will jump on the goldfish sides and start eating away at their slime and they will kill the goldfish. So you can't have that. And a lot of people say, well, I'll get some ottos, you know, I'll put some auto in there. And uh, well, it will take a lot of them. And the trouble with those fish is you probably need 10, 20. And out of that 10 or 20, let's say you buy 20 of them, you're going to be lucky if, if you have 50% of them live. They just don't seem to be that hardy. They're good for an established tank to put some of those fish in, but uh, they're, they're, I mean, I've ordered like 20 of them, and I'm lucky if after a month or two, I have, you know, 10 left, because all of a sudden, 10 are gone, 10 die. But I said, there, there is an animal you can get. Now, this animal could be used, let's say, if you have a planted aquarium, and... Um, it's getting out of hand and you can't get to it. You're working. Uh, I can't get to it till the winter when I have time. I don't have time to get to it. Now, the tank really looks bad. I don't care. I don't want to tear down the tank. I don't have the time. This animal's for you. Uh, I have a goldfish aquarium and I really don't have much in there. I got a big algae problem and it seems like nothing is working. This animal's for you. I have an aquarium, and uh, it's all hardscape. I have some stones. I have wood. I like the way it looks. Once again, I have an algae problem. And, I mean, I, ju I just can't seem to get rid of it. There's one animal. It's indigenous to Florida. And uh, Poinicea diffusia is an animal that is indigenous to Florida. And a common name for this animal is called an apple snail. You can order them online at the fish stores. They sell them here in Florida. You can buy them for about four or five dollars. They're the biggest freshwater snail that we have. Okay, and they grow to be a good size. And you can usually buy them. They're good sized snails. And a lot of people don't know what they're buying, but if you're buying it knowing what you're buying, uh, you can come up with an animal that will profusely eat algae. That is, I think, what that animal has been designed for. It will also eat plants. I will repeat that. It will also eat your plants. So if you have plants, they're already destroyed. You don't care. You have algae. You have the string algae. It's like, oh, I... I don't want to tear down the tank. I don't want to put chemical. I buy one of these. I call these the cleanup crew. These are the guys you buy when you want to throw the towel in and your algae problems are, are killing you. They, they work in ponds and they work in aquariums. Uh, they will profusely eat algae and they will profusely eat your plants. The first thing they're going to hit is your plants. If you have algae on your plants or anything, they're going to they're going to eat your plants right down to the gravel or your substrate. So, if you have plants you don't care about, fine. If you have plastic plants, don't worry about it. If you have rocks, if you have wood, don't worry about it. They they seem to eat more than what you would expect one snail to eat. Usually, if you have um, Let's say a 40 gallon breeder or something like that. One snail will be enough, one big snail. Their eggs are like a pinkish color compared to the eggs of the mystery snail, which are white. These are a pinkish color. So you know then you have apple snail eggs. They lay their eggs the same as a mystery snail above the water. They are big, big snails, okay? But they will eat so uh, algae, you, you, can't, you can't grow enough algae. Let me put it that way. I'm just going to call it the way it is. 
You cannot grow enough algae to keep these things alive without supplementing their food after a while. They will just come in and clean up everything. Um, so I recommend that to people. If you want to do it a natural way, would you like to do things more natural? They say, well, I don't have a lot of aquascaping. Or some people will say, I don't have any aquascaping at all. I'm running a sump and I have BCB bags and stuff, but I am getting algae and it's and it's growing and I got goldfish. I say, well, get yourself an apple snail. They'll start eating on the glass. They'll start eating wherever you got algae. They're going to start eating it. They won't bother your goldfish, but they definitely will bother the algae. And they, oh, wow, really? And yes. Yeah. And they always come up, well, I thought the mystery snail would do that. Eh. Now, mystery snails will eat algae to some extent, but I think this is the king. This is, this is the ultimate weapon that hobbyists can use to eat algae in an aquarium or to eat plants in an aquarium. If you have an overabundance of plants and you don't really care if uh, they get eaten, Put one of them in there and they will start eating everything. It puts to shame, Picosimus. It puts them to shame. One of these snails does. It literally embarrasses Picosimus. You think they're algae eaters? <laughs> they don't hold a candle to an apple snail. <laughs> That's a mere child's play to an apple snail, uh, Picosimus. <laughs> they, they don't touch nothing compared to an apple snail. Oh my gosh. But anyway, it's Mother Nature's way of clearing up your tank. So if you have new tank syndrome, you don't like it, you're the kind of person who says, I don't want the chemicals, get yourself an apple snail. Take care of everything. So this is Dr. Novak. Until next time, I hope this video kind of helps you. It's not for everyone. And I will say once again, if you have planted aquarium and you love your plant, do not buy an apple snail, even if you have an algae problem. However, if you have plants, they're no good now. You realize you're going to have to throw them away. Feed them to an apple snail. And that's another thing before I end this. I used to have a tank with apple snails in it. And when I would clean my aquariums out, you know, with plants or too much moss, or something like that. You know, we're always cleaning out our tanks. We've got too much. You throw them in the apple snail tank. Let them eat them. So you're kind of recycling your your waste. I mean, if you have a tank with, uh, you know, four or five apple snails and you clean out your aquarium and you have some leaves left from what you cut down or cleaned out, throw them in the apple snail tank. They'll eat them. That, you know, they'll munch on all that stuff. They love it. It's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like cheese and crackers to them. Fine. Throw them in there. You got too much uh, moss growing or the moss grows and it gets uh, algae all over it. You're going to ready to toss it in a trash can. Ah, put it in the apple snail tank. They'll eat it. <laughs> okay. Really? They do that good of a job. And they look cosmetically like if you have a goldfish aquarium and you're having that algae problem. They cosmetically look pretty nice in goldfish aquarium. They kind of go, you know. Goldfish are big, fat, you know, wobbly fish. And, and they got these big, huge apple snails going. And they kind of go together. Apple snails help keep the algae down uh, if the goldfish don't wind up eating it. And they'll wipe it out. You'll find out you can't feed them enough. So until next time, this is Dr. Owen. I hope this information has helped you with uh, doing something a little more naturally, using one of the animals that are available in our aquariums to help maybe you have that new tank and you're waiting for it to cycle and break in. Apple snail can help you keep that algae at bay. So until next time, happy fish keeping.